Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Nut, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to our playthrough of Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. We're uh, still playing as Bob in his prime. Bob, our main character from our uh, group therapy Dark Souls 3 playthrough. And uh, yeah, he's looking more buff than ever. And uh, we're still in the Forest of the Giants, in the Fortress of the Forest of the Giants. And uh, we just opened up this door here after we killed the last giant in our previous episode. And there we go, our first new type of soldier taken care of. Nice bit of uh, background information. I'm currently playing this with a cat on my lap. Because she uh, sometimes wants to join in. She doesn't like me talking. Yeah, yeah, Mila, fine, fine. Just stay there. So uh, heading up the staircase over here. I think we're fine for now. Seems they added a lot of enemies in this hallway, which is going to be annoying. Seems like this guy is a bit slower than the other ones, though. There we go. And I have a bit of a better grasp on my sword's length. Just moving the cat away from my keyboard because I don't want him to stop her to stop the uh, recording. And now we're gonna head up to the upper level of this place. Okay, so there's an archer in the back, as I suspected. Just gonna keep stabbing this guy. And then this archer gonna have to die as well. Ow. There we go. Let's pick that up, whatever that is. More gauntlets, we have have plenty of those. So now we're right on top of the statues we were uh, traversing not too long ago. We have another soul of a nameless soldier. And uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just head into this fog gate, why don't we? Because uh, we get to another point of uh, contention in this game. And we have another boss fight. Because we, yeah, it's a familiar face. We've seen this guy already. When we're fighting him on top of the... One of the the, the, upper, the lower areas. One of the commentary this game often gets is that a lot of the bosses are just dudes in armor. And this one surely is. So, uh, hello, pursuer. I'm actually wondering, can I parry this dude? I can actually dodge him, so that's fine. Okay, try to bury that one. Oh, that was that was not good. There we go, and let's heal up. Just trying to get the parry timing down. That wasn't it. Nope. Let's try that again. So what was I saying? Yeah, dudes in armor, and they have a point. People have a point, of course they do. But I feel like the dudes in armor actually are nicely designed and distinct from one another. They actually warrant this kind of uh, boss typing. Because I feel like the Pursuer is one of my favorite boss fights in the game even. He's a really, really cool boss. And your first kind of skill check to see if you're actually paying attention. I'm actually just going to try my parry here for a second. Before we actually get into the nitty gritty of it. The top one just left. So I'm only left with this guy. I do find, feel like they up the aggro range on a lot of these enemies. With the uh, Skullduck of the First Sin edition. Could be wrong. But I feel like they're yeah a bit more aggressive than they normally are. There we go. Down with this guy. And back into the arena with the Pursuer. Our, uh, our very first dude in armor. So let's see. He comes from the floor this time, not via eagle. Nope. My parry did absolutely nothing. I don't know if I need to parry sooner. Yeah, there we go. I think if I now go over here. And... Oh, that I missed. I missed. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Let's go double-handed. Do a little bit of damage. Oh god. And then on the other side. And then slash, slash. No. Okay. I think I'm fine dodging him. Because I kind of know from before what he can do. I always get hit by the shield there. But 
think we're fine. I think we're fine. Just gonna let him... Yeah, I rolled a bit too soon, Dave. And then heal, because I don't want to lose this now. Actually fine, but... Shield, and then... Nothing. There we go. And take him down. Goodbye, Pursuer. There we go, our second boss fight. But this is a bit too soon on the episode to end it on that, of course. Soul of the Pursuer and Ring of Blades. The Ring of Blades is actually really handy as well. So let's check our equipment. The Ring of Blades is modeled after the Mad Knight of Alkin's weapon of choice. Increases physical attack. The kingdoms of Alkin and Ven long ago flourished on these very grounds. They were both founded by the same man, but were reduced to rivalry in spite. So the kingdoms of Alken and Ven. So we have our first names. Although we do know that the king is called King Vendrick. So maybe this was actually the kingdom of Ven. Might make sense. And now we have the soul of the pursuer who lurks in Drang Lake. The pursuer who seeks the bearer of the sign will not rest until his target is slain. So uh, yeah, he goes after, uh, after the undead and he punishes the undead for whatever they they've done wrong in his uh, in his eyes so and here we have the head of that statue so uh the sword is over there and the head from that statue was tossed off over here and we can now walk through that now that we killed ourselves a pursuer and this is actually the area with the um the soldiers if i'm not mistaken i'm just gonna oh the tree is actually guarded again so that's something they've added as well. So the giants that are still here, because now we can see those are actually giants, those trees, are actually being attacked by... Okay. By soldiers. Which actually makes a lot of sense, because these soldiers were here protecting the fortress from the giants, so in their hollowed zombie state, they just attacked the giants willy-nilly. Which is a nice detail, I feel like. There's a lot of people are also complaining about the difficulty spike in Skull of the First Sin. For now, it's doable. But, yeah. I'm curious as to what the game is going to throw at us next. Because there are a lot of extra enemies. That is true. And I just wanted to drop down here. Because there are... There is an interesting item over there. Because I think it's the first really good armor set. There we go, the Drang Lake Sword, Shield, Mail, Gauntlets, and Leggings. I think we got... Yeah, we're right on top of that uh, turtle guy, if I'm not mistaken. The Iron Turtle, as they call him. I don't think there is anything on this area. No, because you can't go over here, so... Gonna have to be careful. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Thought he was uh, fucking off. Oh yeah, the fire sword does a lot of damage to this guy. There we go. We are getting used to fighting these guys. So 20,000 souls, I'm gonna do something with that first. Okay. Didn't realize it happened to that uh, archer the last time I killed him, but apparently he took a bit of a nap inside of a wall. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. So uh, as you might have noticed, I'm still carrying my 20,000 souls. It's just that I didn't want to just go through the entire fortress again to get to our next area, which also holds a bonfire. So I'm just uh, cutting corners a bit. So there's a nest in here, and if you just check out that nest and examine it, we get another familiar face, because that eagle is coming back, and it, now it picked Bob up. This was not my plan. So there we go, dropping us off at the Lost Bastille, or Bastille, because Bastille is a French word, so um, let's check out these chests. don't think there's anything too useful in there, probably some torches or something like that. Human effigies, that is useful, because I did just lose another life to the pursuer. But at least two tries is not bad. And the dull ember, oh, we can use that at the blacksmith, so... 
yeah, I was lying. Very useful chests. But uh, before we do, we continue in this area. We're not going to do that just yet. Because uh, this place is a bit abandoned. And I'm just going to show you a little bit. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, suddenly it's nighttime over here. And it's another kind of castle-y area. But it's more a prison than anything else. Because the Bastille in uh, France was also a prison next to a fortress. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be an area for later. But I feel like this area change kind of makes sense as you have the... The eagle bringing you from one area to the next, so there might be a bit of distance between that. Let's head back. So first up, we also got the Drang Lake mail, the Drang Lake armor set and the weapons. Traditional Drang Lake armor belonged to Captain Drummond. Drummond's ancestors have served Drang Lake for generations, principally as defenders of the Great Fort. But Captain Drummond is the last in this proud line. And the Drang Lake sword is actually a great sword, the royal from Drummond as well, the royal army captain. An old and unadorned sword perhaps, but the pride and joy of this venerable captain. An heirloom passed from grandfather to father, and then from father to son, Drummond and those before him used this sword to repel those who would threaten their great land, so in this case the Chines. And last but not least, the shield is actually a lot better as well, so we're going to equip that in a second. But uh, even with its embossing terribly worn, the shield exudes pride and authority. An heirloom passed from grandfather to father and then from father to son. Blah, 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 that's the same. There we go. Equip the shield. There we go. I equipped the armor as well next to the shield. So uh, that's going to be a nice upgrade. So we're underneath 70. But that's not how this game actually works. It works a bit differently. Uh, so I think we can actually go up to 100 if I'm not mistaken. Just going to try that out. Oh no, never mind, never mind. It also has a cutoff at 70%. Wanted to try that out. So if I'm over 70, I just have this slow roll. I see that you have an ember. There we go, an ember Let's for the blacksmith. This. I hear that embers were once used in a special process to fortify weapons. But the whole art was lost long ago. Blacksmiths can't use embers anymore. Including myself, I'm afraid. Just keep it as a souvenir. Okay, no need to start bitch slapping me for it, but uh, let's see if we can't do anything with our weapons. <laughs> Although you know what, I'm gonna stick to the fire sword a bit longer until we find something else. I could actually buy a few things, but I'm just gonna use the souls to level up and we'll head back towards the... Uh, well, actually, no, we're gonna stay in Majula, so give me a second. So, leveled up quite a bit, and that means we're actually gonna move forwards towards our next area, which is down here. We saw that in the background, that there's like a city in the water. That's exactly where we're gonna head right now. So, tunnels are boring, so I kind of skipped through the whole thing. But look at this. You can't say Dark Souls 2 isn't pretty now, can you? Hades Tower of Flame, look at that. That's one magnificent lighthouse, and look at this level in general. It looks... Well, I must say it looks kind of familiar. Um, and there's even another city in the water over there. Seems like more remnants of whatever this was. And we have this uh, white knight fella. He kind of has a few arrows in him, even a few in his eyes. But uh, we'll, leave him, we'll leave him be for now. Because I just want to activate the bonfire of this area first. And we have a lot of big dudes available to us here. There we go. Ow. You know what? Just, just fall off. Still low adaptability, so my dodging isn't doing much. So let's just nip back down here to this uh, slightly hidden bonfire and activate it. Look at this lovely blue water. Just gonna rest. And, um, yeah, this is our knight in, uh, well, our dudes in armor episode, so for the rest of this episode, we will be fighting dudes in armor. There we go, that was a bit cleaner than the first one. There we go, and then this knight, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna just leave those alone for now. This is gonna be hard enough without them. But as you can see, our armor can take a lot of punishment right now. And, uh, that's exactly why I wanted that Drang Lake armor. Just to uh, give me a bit of respite. There we go. Another human effigy. Always handy in a pinch. 
But unlike embers from Dark Souls 3, uh, human effigies don't actually heal you. So, uh... So I'm stuck with my, uh, poultry... Oh! Ah! There we go. I was just wondering about that. Normally there's a pedestal here, and there it is. So let's just pull this. And then you can see that arena in the background there. With uh, the, You can even see a woman praying there. We're gonna head over there, but pulling the levers actually helps us out because it raises uh, a platform over there to make that floor a bit more traversable. Oh, that is new. There's a, is that a dragon over there just sleeping? That is definitely something they've added. Now, I want to have, yeah, there's three of those knights over here. So I'm just going to try and pull them one by one if I can. Yeah, okay, so this guy's going to gonna start fighting me. I clearly dodged that, but... Can I actually parry you? Oh, that was another parry. There we go. I'm out of Estus, so I think I'm gonna have to retry this. Oh god. I heard the pedestal go up. Can I actually... Oh god. Oh no, we're not invisible during those animations. Life jam. There we go. Took us two life gems, but uh, cleared that out. Just gonna stick to the life gems for now, because it feels like... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need that. I, it sounds like I hear armor, but I think it's my own armor when I'm jumping around. So, one more dude in our way. So let's uh, take this guy out. There we go. And um, yeah, I'm gonna heal up. I'm gonna start using my life gems a bit, because uh, later on we're gonna get more Estus Floss charges anyway. Uh, oh, and I didn't pull the lever. Give me a second. And there we go. Boop. Pull that down. And that actually raises another ring. And that, I think, completes the entire floor over there. If I can see it through the window. Looks fine. Looks fine to me. So let's go down and see what's behind that pole gate. Because I promised you guys this was going to be the dudes in armor episode. Well, of course, we're going to also have a double dose of boss fights. Because this is another boss fight. The Dragon Rider. There we go. I'm just going to use my shield a bit in this fight. Because it's actually pretty doable. It's one of the easiest boss fights. Just allowing you to uh, circle jerk this guy. So slowly whittling him down. And again, I love his armor. He is a dude in armor, but I do love his armor. He's not going to get me down, but... At least he has some fashion sense. I don't need to be too greedy now. But if you stay behind his back and just circle him a bit with your shield up, uh, you should be fine. And this is why we actually uh, pulled those levers, because otherwise this arena would have been a bit smaller and you could actually drop off. So don't give him the distance, just keep circling him. There we go. Don't hit there a bit. But that's why the Drang Lake shield is so amazing. We have a 100% shield. And that blocks all physical damage, which is the only type of damage you can actually do. And there we go. Second boss fight down. Goodbye, Dragon Rider. Victory achieved. Soul of the Dragon Rider. So he might have a bit of an interesting backstory as well. So let's just check that out. And as you can see in the background, that's actually really cool. You can see the, that's where we started. And you can see the White Knight has actually woken up. Uh, it's because we just killed the Dragon Rider. So killing the Dragon Rider actually makes this area a lot harder. Because those White Knights are actually also an addition from the Scholar of the First Sin. Because there usually was only one right next to the, the armor dudes over there, up there. And it feels like this guy is just slowly shuffling towards me. And I don't want to fight him, so let's just keep moving. Because if I am recall correctly, and if they haven't changed it, there should be... Another... Oh, I missed that item over there. There should be another bonfire here. There we go. And we here are at the Praying Lady. So let's just light the bonfire. And yeah, we're going to take a little break. So that was the uh, Dudes in Armor episode. We killed the Pursuer. And we killed the Dragon Rider. And uh, 
Next up, we're going to have one more dude in armor, but it's a familiar dude in armor, so I hope you guys watch next time. Because uh, next time we're going to go towards that cathedral over there, and we're going to have to fight the dragon, apparently. So see you guys next time in the next episode of Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Goodbye.